Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my free training on Alien Skin Exposure X4. Please remember to share this video, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about presets. There are dozens of presets bundled into Alien Skin Exposure X4. I'm going to start out by showing you how to apply those presets to your image. Then I'm going to demonstrate how you could create your own preset from your adjustments. Now, before I do that, just let me mention something real quick. I've been getting emails here and there. Uh, from folks asking me, does Alien Skin Exposure X4 do this? Does Exposure X4 do that? Uh, will it run on my system? Stuff like that. Really, my best advice is in the description below this video, there'll be a link to the Alien Skin website. Go over there and download their fully working 30-day uh, free trial. Install it on your system. Make sure that it runs. Make sure that it has all the tools you need for your workflow to process your images the way you want to process them. When you download their fully working 30-day free trial, you do not have to give up a credit card number or anything like that. Just give it a try. If you like it, great. Buy it. Use the discount code that I'll have in the description below this video and you'll save another 10%. Um, if you don't like it, just delete it off your system and that way, you you know, no harm, no foul. Um, also, I will mention that in the latest update and as I outlined in my last video, there is now LUT capabilities in Alien Skin Exposure X4. And in the description below this video, I'll have a link to my donationware LUTs. So you could get some LUTs for a donation, uh, 75 different LUTs. Give them, a, give them a look and see if you like those. Now, as far as presets in Alien Skin Exposure X4, I really do like the way they're um, used or the way they're utilized in Alien Skin. Specifically, most of the presets, not all, but most of them will not move a slider in the basic tab at all. Reason why I like that is it allows the user more control to tweak that preset the way they like it. For those of you familiar with Lightroom, you'll know that when you apply a preset, most often that preset moves all the sliders in the basic tab. That way they're kind of preset somewhere, and when you come in to fine tune, you may not be able to uh, fine tune the image as thoroughly or as best way possible because the presets might be moved extremely one way or the other, and you need it to go further. It's really great that these presets really don't touch the basic tab. At least most of the presets don't. For example, I have this image here. It's slightly underexposed. Uh, I did that on purpose because I didn't want the sky to blow out. Well, really, if I go over and I pick any preset in any application, not just Alien Skin Exposure X4, like these black and white Polaroid, if I pick one, this like pull a pan, no grain, I hover over it, you can see it's still kind of underexposed, right? Well, if I come over here first and I open up shadows and I kind of make this maybe bring exposure up a tiny bit, then I come over here and I go to this pull a pan, no grain. Look at that. It didn't move. It doesn't move any of these sliders. I'll even apply it. To apply the preset, just click on it. And you can see it didn't reset my sliders. It left them right where it was. So I think that's a really uh, great advantage to the way the presets are utilized in Exposure X4 compared to numerous other programs, not just Lightroom. Now with that said, let's talk about more of the features of this uh, left-hand panel. I reset that. I'm gonna, I am gonna open up shadows a little bit and exposure a little bit. Okay, on this left-hand panel where the presets are, uh, you'll notice there's a lot of different categories of presets. Along the top, and as I roll one open, you can see we have a description of the preset. And if I hover over the description, we'll get a preview of that preset in the main uh, view area over here. Along the top, though, you'll notice right here we have these four horizontal lines. If I click on this once, here, let's open up that one. If I click on this once, we'll get a different view. We'll get a single postage stamp preview over here. And then if I just hover over that, single postage stamp preview, it will be previewed in the main window. 
So just like that, just give it a second to render and you can see that. Now if I click on it, that four horizontal lines now turned into a solid square. If I click on this again, it's now four squares. And you can see now the presets are two abreast. They're the same exact presets. They're just now displayed two abreast, two previews abreast. If I click this again, we'll have nine little squares and now we're three abreast. So you could have your best view that works for you. If I click it again, we'll cycle back to the description only. Now for this demonstration, let's leave it on the two abreast. Let's say, let's go to three abreast just for the heck of it. All right, so we're there. Now, this one, this icon next to that is these categories. Do you want them all open or closed? If I click on this once, they're all closed. If I click on it again, it rolls them all open. So all those categories are open. Instead of coming in here and closing them individually, I could just click right there and close them all at once. The plus and minus, the plus is to create your own user preset. And I'll show you that in a moment. And the minus is to delete your user preset. Now, as far as the presets themselves, I mentioned that they're in these categories. Well, there's these are really subcategories. Up along the top are more broader categories. First of all, just all the color presets. You could click there. All the black and white presets. You could favorite a preset. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And if you do and click favorite, it will be here. That way you don't have to search through all the preset for that all the presets for that one preset you use most often. And when you create user presets, they'll be in their own category and you click there to just look at your user presets. Now, obviously I don't have any yet. Now we'll go back to all. Now, if you need to just search for a preset, there's a search bar. So you could just, you know, it's, you know, like a, you know, ACFA film or something. You could search for it here. Um, so it's very easy. Now I mentioned to apply the preset, you could just click on it. I showed that, right? So you could just go into a category. Uh, let's say uh, color films aged and I could hover over it and if I liked that I could just click on this one time and it applies it see it applied it now I am gonna undo that by hitting command Z to undo its control Z if you have a PC there is another way though to preview the presets and I kind of like this way it's kind of unique to Alien Skin Exposure X4 it's called audition mode if you go to the top toolbar, you'll notice there's a little spotlight right here. Click on that and you'll notice that our image moved up and it's prompting us to drop a preset here. So I could take a preset, just click on it, drag it there and drop it. So there is this uh, Color Pro fading preset. Uh, I could go to this postcard preset, drop that there. Again, just keep dropping the presets there. Now let's just say that I'd like, I like this yellowed slightly preset. To apply this, if you look right here, it says apply and discard. One thing I found, now I don't know if this is a bug or if it's meant to do this. Remember on this image, I pre-adjusted exposure and shadows. If I just clicked on this preset and applied it, it will not adjust those sliders at all. It leaves everything alone. But if I go down here and I click apply here, it sets these back to zero. So I'm not sure if that's a bug or what. And to better demonstrate this, I'm going to hit command Z and undo that. Okay, well, let's just reset this. Okay, and we'll come in and I had shadows open and I had exposure open a little bit, a little bit, not a lot. Okay. Now, that yellowed slightly, instead of going through this audition mode, I'm just going to click on it and apply it. And you'll notice it didn't move these sliders. So if you apply the preset when in, aud in audition mode, it will reset the sliders. If you apply it by just clicking on it on the left panel, it doesn't reset the sliders. It's a little quirk I found. I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's supposed to do that, but I wanted to make you aware of it. Now, I'm going to reset this again. Let's create our own preset. We're going to come in here and I'm just, it's probably going to look horrible because I'm going to do this very quickly, all right? So I'm just going to do a quick uh, processing job on this image. And I'm going to add some sharpening. Not the right way. I'm just going to move those sliders so they're moved. So basically... Then I'm going to go to the color tab and I'm going to go to the luminance section of the color tab and I'm going to make yellows brighter and greens darker 
This is what I, I typically do do this. Maybe not that extreme, but just so you could see it. So I moved three sliders down here. And um, let's see. I want to, I think that's it. Let's, so I did basic detail and color, and I didn't really do anything else. But this is, let's say, what I normally do to almost all my landscape images to begin with. So this is kind of my base settings. I could save this as a preset. So if I go over here and I click this little plus sign, we have this edit preset dialog box. First of all, we'll give it a name and I'm gonna call it my base landscape settings. Okay, now category, by default, it's gonna be saved into the my presets category. These are all the categories over here. You could click a new category and create a new category. I'm gonna leave it go there. You could give it a description, this is optional. So you could tell it, you know, this is whatever. Whatever you wanna say, you could say it there. I'm gonna leave it blank for this demonstration. Next, the base adjustments. Do you want to include the overall intensity adjustments? No. Uh, crop, I didn't crop this. Spot heal, normally you wouldn't put spot heal in a preset because you're maybe removing sensor spots. Unless they're in the same exact spot every single time, the same exact size, maybe you wanna do it, but most often, I don't think that's something you check. Lens corrections, you may want to apply those all the time. Transform adjustments, if you're working cityscapes or real estate, something like that, you might want to apply those all the time. Now, these adjustments down here, do you want to apply it to all the layers or do you want to choose which layer it goes to? Because this is my base landscape settings that I'll do, let's say, to every landscape image, I'm going to apply it to all layers. Now, this is the important part. What exactly of these tabs do you want applied or want included in this preset? If you have them all checked and leave them all checked, which is fine, when you apply the preset, it will look like this. But let's say I came in here and I did some pre-adjustments before I applied my preset. Let's say I added uh, some bokeh and I added some uh, grain and I added a vignette. Well, if I leave these checked and I then I have the preset created and then I apply my preset after I did that bokeh grain and vignette, it's going to reset those back to what I had this preset set at, which was nothing. I didn't have any bokeh, I didn't have any grain, and I didn't have any vignette. So it's going to remove it. So really, you want to probably go in here and just make sure that what is checked is what you changed. So I didn't do bokeh, I didn't do vignette, I did basic adjustments. I didn't do infrared, I didn't do LUT, I didn't do white balance, but you may want your white balance set. So let's leave that. Um, grain, I didn't do. I didn't do tone curve, I did color black and white tab, remember I brought yellow um, luminance up, green luminance down, and blue luminance down. Um, focus, I didn't do that. Uh, color uh, is in the basic tab. I'm going to leave that set. That's, you know, even though I really, I don't, maybe I brought, I might have brought um, saturation up. I don't remember now, but I'll leave that set. Uh, masking, did I do any masking? No, I don't need that. Overlays, I didn't apply any overlays, so I'm going to leave that off. Detail, I adjusted detail. I added sharpening and noise reduction. And layer opacity. I have opacity at 100, and because this is my base adjustment, I want that applied. So I'm going to click OK. Now it created this preset, and it's down here in my presets, way down here. So why don't we roll those closed, and we'll go to my presets. There it is. Now I'm going to reset this, and we're going to open up that basic tab. And I'm going to go to my presets and click it and it applied it. And you could see now in this case, because I created this preset and I move basic adjustments, it applied those basic adjustments. So that will, in this case, do it. So that's how you create your own preset. Now, if you want to delete your preset, you could click this minus sign right here and it will delete it. Um, you get warning. I'm not gonna do that, but you could. Now I mentioned you could favorite preset. Let's say, if you look closely here, let's go to a different view. If I hover over this, you'll see there's a little star there. If I click on that star, that is now a favorite. So instead of searching for presets, let's say, let's go, I go to color films and let's say that I like this one, whatever that is. 
We'll click that star as well. And let's go to black and white tonality and let's say that I like this one. And I'll favorite that one as well by clicking that star. So now let's say there's, those are my three favorite presets. I use one of them almost every time. Well, if I go up here to this favorite category, the three of them will be there and they will be much easier to find. I don't have to go searching for them. There's even my uh, preset that I created. Now, if I want to remove a preset from the favorite category, just click on that little star again. It doesn't delete the preset. It just removes it from the favorite category. So I could remove all three if I want. So we're back down to none. And then that user category, there's my user preset right there. So as I create more and more presets, they'll get uh, this user category will get populated with all of those. We'll go back to all. So I really like the way the presets in general work in Alien Skin Exposure X4. Again, mainly because the presets that are bundled in with the package, most of them do not affect the basic tab at all. And because of that, you could come in and apply a preset and it won't. Even this one, I applied my preset. If I click on Brighten Highlights, notice it didn't really adjust these at all. At all. It left them the way it is. So I, I really like that. It allows you some limited stacking of presets as well in that regard. But mainly, if you're going to stack presets, you would use layers. And we're going to cover layers, that's the segue, layers in our next episode. So I'm going to talk about layers a little bit and how you could then probably stack presets on top of each other utilizing layers. So that's it for this video. Everything you probably needed to know more than you wanted to know about presets in Alien Skin Exposure X4. Remember, in the description below this video will be a link to their website. You could download their fully working 30-day free trial. You could, if you choose to buy it in the description below this video, you could use my um, discount code, save 10%. Also, uh, those LUT files, there's three different packages, 25 LUTs in each package, 75 total LUTs all donation wear. So make a donation and they're yours. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and share this video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also visit my website onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find thousands of totally free videos and articles to help you with your photography. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.